everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews and the next video in my Bra 101 series. Today we're going to be looking at common cup fit alterations you can make to your pattern to get a better fitting bra. If you haven't already, please check out my video on band fit alterations because you want to make sure that your band is fitting perfectly first before we start messing with the cups. So let's get started. The first cup alteration I'm going to be looking at today is what Beverly Johnson calls rounding the crown. It's really common in self-made bras that women feel that the pattern might be a little too pointy. It's just giving a little bit too much pointed projection or the shape is not what they're used to. They may want something that's a little more softer, a little more rounder of a curve. Now, this is a really easy alteration to make and I personally make it all the time. Not because I have a problem with pointy bras. As a matter of fact, I wear a lot of vintage style clothing so pointy bras actually work out really well in those kind of dresses the the reason that i use it so frequently is that it reduces the projection in that i have a very shallow bust it doesn't stick out very far so that's why i use it but it's also useful just if you want a rounder appearance so the picture i have over here is an example of a one piece bottom cup so this would be similar to say the pinup girls classic bra or the Berkeley bra from Orange Lingerie, or maybe the Black Beauty bra from Emerald Erin. So in this version, you can see we need to locate the apex of the cup. And generally, there's going to be a notch mark to indicate the apex, but if there's no notch mark, what you're really looking for is the tallest point of the cup. That's going to be where that pointiness is coming from. So in order to get just a little rounder of a shape, we need to draw a line from a known corner to the other known corner. But where we want to reduce ourselves is at that apex point. So in this example here, you can see the purple line will be what we are going to, the new cut line for this pattern piece instead of the black line. So we've stayed up with the same wire line along the bottom of the cut piece itself, but we have removed some of that projection just from the tippy point of your cup. Now, if you're doing this adjustment, you may need to look at your upper cut piece just to make sure that the distance of that seam or that curve is still going to match up. And if not, you just need to do some adjusting to make things true up a little bit better. So that is a very simple, easy way to sort of reduce the pointiness or projection in your bras if you have a one piece cup on the bottom. But what happens if you have maybe two pieces on the bottom? So that is going to be a very similar alteration just done across two pieces. So in this version, most of the time, I'm gonna say most of the time, the seam that you have between your two bottom cut pieces is going to be along your apex. So that's going to be the tallest point of that cup. So what I'm gonna do is measure down an equal distance on both of those cut pieces. Let's say a quarter of an inch. And then we're gonna draw in our new cut line from the known point on the corner of that cut piece to that quarter of an inch down on the first cut piece. And then once we've done that, we can go ahead into our second cut piece and do the same thing. We wanna connect that quarter of an inch down to the known point that we that is still good on the cut piece. We never wanna change the wire line of the cut pieces. We're only looking at stuff that is in the interior of the bra here. And because we've come down the same amount on both of those cut pieces, a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch, or whatever it is you wanna do, they should still meet up along that side, that seam and be the same length. Now that we understand how to reduce the pointiness of a bra, we can start looking at volume adjustments of your cup. So let's say that we need to overall increase or decrease the volume of the cup itself. The wire looks like it's fitting in fine, but you just have extra fabric or not enough fabric. When I say not enough fabric in your cups, it's generally very easy to see. Maybe you're spilling out over the top or on the side or your wires are pushed away from your body. That means that your cups are too small because there's just not enough space for them to fully encapsulate. You might need more volume in your cups. 
So this technique should be fairly similar to a lot of the ones we've used in the bra fitting. So where we want to add volume is really at the apex of the cup point. We want to, this is if everything else looks like it's okay. So what we want to do is slash running through that apex. So we're going to slash through the upper cut piece running to the apex as well as the lower cut piece running from the apex. And you're either going to hinge from the neckline out if you want a more volume or hinge from the neckline and overlap if you want less volume. So the upper cut piece will hinge from the neckline and the lower cut pieces will hinge from the wire line. So that means you are not changing the length of the wire line or the neckline. You are just adding more material in the center of the cup or taking away material there. So once you've overlapped or spread apart, you need to go back in and fix all of your edges. So for the neckline, if it was a straight neckline before, we wanna make sure we maintain that straight neckline again. And you just do that by drawing a straight line from known point to known point. And on the lower cup, you just need to sort of smooth out that arc to make sure that you have still a nice smooth curve to sew to. So this is particularly useful if your wire is different from what your pattern says you should be using. So in my case, I use a 40 wire, but the cup volume that I tend to need is an A or a B cup, which is corresponding to a 36 wire. So what I'll do is I will pick out the pattern pieces for the 40 wire that I'm using and then reduce the volume in the center of the cup until it fits me appropriately. If you're somebody who is omega shaped, that is you have a smaller wire and then more breast tissue than what your wire size would indicate. So you would be doing the opposite. You would pick the pattern piece that corresponds to your wire size, which should be smaller than what you need. And you're gonna be adding volume to the cup in order to get the, the shape that you need for the larger bust. Now you may find that you should need to make more than one of these slash and spread points, and that's perfectly fine. I would always start by slashing through the apex point. That's, that's the best place to start adding or taking away material. But once you've done that and you've sort of exhausted it, you can certainly go in and take extra darts, maybe two or three more darts along those lines until you get exactly what you need. So next we're going to look at how we can alter the pattern to sort of add a little bit of lift. Now I do this a lot just because I have particularly perky anatomy, let's say, but also if you are a large bust, you might find this a useful tip just to sort of give the illusion of more lifted appearance. I know that when my mom was fitting her bras, this was a technique that she used and it worked really well for her. So what you need to do is look at your upper cup piece. And there is going to generally be a sort of curve on the bottom of that piece. So the straighter we make that curve, the more lift you're going to get. So a balconette bra, something that really sort of lifts and, and sets your girls on a platter, will tend to have a very straight bottom to that upper cup piece. So the closer you get to straight, the more lift you are going to get. So in this example here, you can see the original curve line of that piece was black, and then we put in the purple line, which will be our new lifted upper cut piece. So again, just like we've done in the other fit adjustments, you will need to check to make sure that the length of that line still matches the length of your bottom cut piece. And you may need to make slight tweaks and shave off little bits here and there to, uh, to match those seam lines up. So in the last episode on fitting the band, we talked about gaping on the underarm. You may also experience some gaping in the cup portion as well. So first things first, I would check your elastic. It may be that if you pull the elastic just a little bit tighter along that curve, it could be enough. But if you're still experiencing a lot of gaping such that you can pinch out excess material, we're gonna use the same methodology that we did for the band. And that is, we're going to put on our bra, pinch it out, see how much we need to get rid of. And then when we go to our pattern piece, we're going to cut a slate, 
slash a line running from that underarm section to the other seam line and then use that as a hinge point to overlap our pattern pieces. So you overlap by the same amount that you could pinch out in your too big of cup and that will fix that sort of curve for you. Next, we're going to look at adding a little bit extra coverage to the underarm. So I think a lot of women do have little fluffy bits over here, me included. Uh, it's really not fat, it is breast tissue. Um, so first off, you can check that concern off of your list and almost everyone has it. If you wanna get a little bit more coverage on the underarm area, that is something that we can do. So this one is a little bit more complex. What we're gonna need is we're gonna need our cradle piece and we're gonna need all of our cut pieces that are touching this curve. So it might just be one cut piece, it might be two cut pieces, whatever it happens to be. And the best way to sort of work on this is to go ahead and just cut all of your seam allowances off of your pattern now. It makes it a lot easier to figure out what's going on. So in this example here, you see I've got all dotted lines. That means that this is the actual sewn line and doesn't have any seam allowances on there. So I've butted up my pattern pieces along that underarm curve and i not caring how they look in the center of the bra. What I'm really concerned about is just how they line up on the underarm section. And once we've got that figured out, we can go ahead and draw in our new underarm curve. That's gonna be the purple line in this diagram. So if you want more underarm coverage, of course you draw the curve further out. And then we just need to connect our cut pieces to that purple line and that's gonna be our new cut piece. Once you've done that, of course, you will need to add your seam allowances back into your cut piece. Should be about a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Alternatively, maybe you want less coverage in the underarm. Maybe there's too much fabric here and it's cutting in and you wanna move it in a little bit more. You just do the opposite. So you can draw that purple line into the cut pieces and that's gonna be the new end of your cut piece. So you can just cut your pattern off there and add your seam allowances in. And the next thing that we're going to look at is changing the neckline of your cut piece. So I frequently uh, have to shorten the neckline of my upper cut piece. And this tends to be true of people who maybe are a little bit more bottom heavy and don't have as much uh, breast tissue up here, maybe somebody who has breastfed and so, sort of everything has dropped down a little bit. You're free, it's, it's really common that you might have some excess material on your cup line. So that is that when you put your bra on, you just have some extra material up here that's not sitting flush against your skin. So when we look at our pattern piece, what we need to do is again, we need to maintain the cross cup seam as long as that's looking fine. And we need to take out some distance from the neckline. So this is going to be sort of the opposite of adding volume to the apex. We're going to slash through that upper cut piece, just like we've done in most of our other fit alterations. And now we're going to hinge from the uh, cross cup seam. If you need to make your neckline wider, maybe you're really full up on top, then of course you spread it apart. And if you need to make your neckline narrower like me, uh, you can just overlap that hinge point. Once you've done that, you do need to redraw your lines. So connect known point to known point in a straight line if that's if a straight line what was there before. If it was a curved line there before, just sort of like smooth it out to make sure you don't have any jagged bits. And the same thing with the bottom of the cup as well. It just sort of smooth out the curve of that line so you have a nice, easy place to sew. And the last cup fit alteration that we're gonna go over is what I call splitting the lower cup. Now this is a very common thing that I see in the forums of people just say, oh, I'll split the lower cup. Well, what does that mean? Well, you need to split the lower cup if you find that there is not enough room for the bottom of your breast tissue. So it's like, you'll get a flat spot in the bottom. It looks like a, like just flat. That's really the best way to see it. And you also might see some bulging along the top of the neckline. Uh, and that's because there's just not enough room for everything to fall into place. So by splitting the lower cup, you're giving yourself a little bit more room just in the bottom cup, which allows everything to sort of drop into place and sit more comfortably. So this is really a fit alteration that's only if for 
one direction, so adding more space to the bottom of the cup. You wouldn't really split the cup to reduce the bottom cup volume. So when we're splitting our lower cup, we wanna start out by taking our lower cup piece and slashing it a vertical line through the apex. So if you're unsure what the vertical line should be, it should be running either at a 90 degree angle to your, your arrows or parallel to the arrows on your pattern piece. That's gonna get you that up and down that you really need. So you're gonna slash your pattern piece there and you're going to spread the pattern piece apart. Now you have two pattern pieces. Next, we need to decide how much more you need to add to your bottom cup. I think a good place to start out is adding a quarter of an inch to each side. So a quarter of an inch to each side is a half of an inch in total. If you need to add more than three quarters of an inch in total, I would definitely recommend going up to the next size cup. So this alteration will help you get there if you're close but no cigar, but if you need the next size cup up, you should really go to the next size cup up. So in this example, I'm going to say that we're adding a quarter of an inch to either side, and that's going to give me a total of half of an inch added to my cut piece. Now, where you add this volume is again up to you. You can add it halfway between the top and bottom, and that's certainly fine, but I think that what looks a little bit nicer and tends to work better for lift and just a general appearance is that you're gonna add it in the top third of your cut pieces. So I've drawn a little line that's a quarter of an inch and it's coming out at a 90 degree angle from our slash point, and that is about a third of the way down from the cut piece. Next, we need to draw our, our sewing line. So we wanna connect our seam allowance point. We wanna hit the highest point at our little quarter of an inch line and then come back to our seam allowance point. That's gonna be the new sew line of our cut piece. Once we have that on both of our cut pieces, we can add in our seam allowance. And the seam allowance should be a quarter of an inch away from that sew line. And once we've done that, we can clean everything up and you have your two cut pieces. Now, if you want, you could add notch marks to there. A good place to add a notch mark is exactly where we've added that extra fullness in. And that will help you line things up a little bit better. So this is if you need to add one seam line in. You can add as many seam lines as you want, but I would definitely make the first one running through that apex point. Generally, in bra making, the more seams you have, the better ability you have to shape the bra. So if you want a really round, soft appearance, you need to add more seam lines in to be able to get more curvature. I hope you found this information useful in getting your perfectly fitted bra pattern. Remember, this is a journey. It's never going to fit perfectly right out of the box. And being able to manipulate the pattern to get to fit your personal body is the most rewarding experience I think that you can get out of bra making. Once you have a pattern that fits, you don't necessarily need to start all over again with your next bra pattern. I have a series on my channel called Make It Your Own, which gives some tips and ideas for how you can take a well-fitting pattern and sort of change up the style lines to make it look completely different. So if you already have a pattern that fits well, be sure to check out that series to get more ideas. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.